It's a veggie BLT pita! I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway. Aloha, I'm Veggie Pita, and I need your help. Thanks to a combination of my short attention span and buying way too many games back when I worked at GameStop, I have a rather extensive backlog of games I've barely even put in the system, let alone beat. This is something I want to fix, and where you come in. I'm starting with the Wii because it's probably the system I've played the least amount of games on. I've chosen 10 games I own that I really want to beat, but I've just never gotten around to. Help me figure out which game to start first. Voting instructions are after the list. I'll stream my playthrough and post archives of the game that wins the vote. So, in reverse alphabetical order, here are the top 10 Wii games I really should play. Xenoblade Chronicles. This was one of the three Operation Rainfall games. Operation Rainfall is where a bunch of fans got together to petition Nintendo of Japan to bring three RPG games over to the United States. So a lot of people wrote together and Operation Rainfall happened, and Xenoblade Chronicles is probably the biggest success of Operation Rainfall, even though it was originally only released through GameStop. Xenoblade Chronicles is an open-world action RPG. This game shares some staff with Xenogears, and it's different publishing companies, so it can't really share the Xenogears mythos, but you can tell they were kind of pulling from the same cloth. Also, this game does have giant robots, which is awesome because more games need giant robots, especially RPGs. I played this game briefly, but I really hated the combat system. I will admit, I kind of came in already thinking I wasn't going to like the combat, so maybe Xenoblade Chronicles deserves a second chance for me with a more open mind. With Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming out soon, and my Switch being very lonely for games, I probably should play Xenoblade Chronicles before I start on that one. But we'll see. Sin and Punishment Star Successor this is the sequel to an obscure N64 game that I don't think ever got released in the US. At least not physical. It may have come to the virtual console eventually, but I think that was either just before or actually after Sin and Punishment Star Successor came out. It's an arcade style shooter, but unlike most normal rail shooters, the Wiimote aims your weapon, but you can actually move around the screen with like a jet pack or rolling to dodge enemies using the nunchuck. Sin and Punishment Star Successor is made by Treasure, the people who made Gunstar Heroes, Contra Hardcore, and other amazing but really hard games. I honestly have no idea what the story really is, and the back of the box doesn't help at all, but it probably doesn't matter because Treasure games are full of great action and crazy bosses. But again, they're usually pretty hard, especially for people like me who kind of suck at video games. I played the demo when I worked at GameStop, but that was only like 10 minutes or so before customers started walking in, and I just never got a chance to really play it on my own. Silent Hill Shattered Memories This is a remake slash reimagining slash reboot of Silent Hill. It has the same characters, and obviously it has the town of Silent Hill. But pretty much most of the events and everything else that happens in the game is different from the original. There's no actual combat with enemies anymore, um, but there are chase sequences where you have to escape some demons in like an icy dream area. There are also psychological tests throughout the game that change aspects of the story. So you could actually play the game multiple times and get different results each time. Silent Hill Shattered Memories is one of the better looking and playing of the recent Silent Hill games. I don't count PT in that because, well, we all know what Konami did. I remember being excited that this game got announced for US release because I got to play the demo at the 2009 Tokyo Game Show. So it was like, wow, I played this, this is really cool. When I finally got to buy it, I did play it for a few hours, but I think I was overwhelmed with the choices I needed to make for like the best ending. I was thinking too hard on how to get the best out of the game rather than just play the game for fun. Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles This is a straight up arcade rail shooter where the game leads you along and you shoot everything that comes on screen. 
It involves the stories of Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 3, and some bonus scenarios that help tie it all together. There are multiple paths you can take through the different levels, and there are weapon upgrades and secret files to find that help explore the lore of Resident Evil. I love rail shooters, and I love Resident Evil, so this is obviously a natural choice for I need to buy this right away, which I did. And I previously played through the first level or so, but I was playing it with a buddy, and distance and time have become factors that mean I can't really play with him anymore, unfortunately. This game is kind of hard with one player only, so if it does win the vote, I may try to con someone else into playing with me. Pandora's Tower This was the last of the Operation Rainfall games to actually reach the US. It's an action RPG, um, but it's single player, so you don't have any team or AI partners. But there's also a lot of like puzzle and exploration. It's got a really dark premise, which was intriguing to me, and it involves gathering monster flesh to feed to a lady so she is no longer cursed. And depending on how well you play or how well you treat that cursed girl, there are multiple endings. Some of them bad, some of them worse. It reminds me of Drakengard in that I don't think there are actually any good endings. Just better than bad. Unfortunately, the action part of the action RPG is kind of intimidating to me, and I have never even put this in my Wii despite buying it brand new day one. But maybe it's time to face my fears and feed a girl some monster flesh. Metroid Other M This is an action-adventure game with some focus on exploration, but considering that Team Ninja is involved in making it, the people behind Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive, you can bet a lot of the focus is actually on the action part of the action-adventure. This game has a pretty bad rap among gamers, although not much is mentioned on the gameplay elements, it's mostly on the story and characterization side. I like the Metroid games, although I don't like the Prime games, mostly because they are in first person completely, and that kind of gameplay throws me off. As for Metroid Other M, I've actually played about four hours worth of this game, but it was on a friend's system before I even owned a Wii, and I never restarted it on my own Wii. They just announced two Metroid games at E3 this year, so Metroid is kind of a hot topic right now. The Last Story This is the first of the Operation Rainfall games to actually make it to the US, and it came in a pretty nifty limited edition version as well, which I bought of course. It's an action RPG, although the combat kind of has stealth and environmental damage involved as well. The game is made by Hironobu Sakaguchi, who is the father of Final Fantasy. And with his connections, it also has music by Nobuo Uematsu, who is basically the father of Final Fantasy music. I don't like to judge things necessarily only on who has made them or what those people have made in the past, but that is pretty much a winning combination. There's a lot of focus on the main cast and the camaraderie between them, which is really something I like. I played for the first few chapters, but most of that was me grinding for different color pigments so I could customize the clothing options on my party. I'm not a huge fan of the combat, I kind of muddled my way through, but that might mean I just need more time to learn it. Fragile Dreams Farewell Ruins of the Moon This is an adventure, action RPG, survival horror combination? It's got a lot going on, but somehow it seems to make it work. Fragile Dreams has the interesting concept of you being possibly the last survivor on Earth, and you need to wander the empty world and find out what happened. The Wiimote is used in ways that make sense in this game. You can use it as like a flashlight, the Wiimote speaker will have radio broadcasts or other communication, and the combat I think is also Wiimote based. I did play for a few hours, but the most I remember is getting kind of annoyed at the weapons breaking. There are a lot of things to do and keep track of in Fragile Dreams, but it might be worth it just for the wonderful atmosphere the game puts out. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Crystal Bearers 
This is an action-adventure game, which is not very Final Fantasy feeling, or at least back then there weren't many Final Fantasies that weren't RPG. The main character has telekinetic abilities, and they are performed by Wiimote movements. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. <laughs> I do like the connection to the original Crystal Chronicles game, with the four different races and stuff like that. I do have some fond memories of playing the original Crystal Chronicles with friends, though I was usually the person who got to hold the bucket. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to interact with the world, and doing different things to different people can affect their moods, which actually shows up above their uh, character model. I watched a friend play about the first 30 minutes of this game, because we were both curious on what it was like. I remember a lot of story and exposition thrown at him, and also a lot of Wiimote flailing as they introduced the telekinetic abilities. I haven't actually played it myself though, as I think I just bought it as part of a buy to get one deal and never ended up playing it. Arc Rise Fantasia Arc Rise Fantasia is one of the only turn-based RPGs on the Wii. The characters are designed by the same person who did Erika 7, which is really cool and pleases the anime fan inside of me. The gameplay and style look very Tales of-ish, which again is really good in my eyes, though the combat is different since it's turn-based versus action RPG. The party shares a point pool where each move takes up a certain amount of points, so there's a lot of tactical thought behind whether you need to use all your points for that turn or whether you need to store some up to perhaps do a big super powered move the next turn. The voice acting is not great. Just is not great. I do remember that. I bought Arcaris Fantasia day 1 and I do remember playing it for a few hours, but I honestly don't remember why I stopped playing it, so maybe this is the time for me to pick it up again. That is my list of top 10 Wii games I really should play. Now it's time for you to vote for what I play first. Comment below with your choice, or if that doesn't work for you, just comment on my Facebook page or even directly to me on Twitter. Official voting results will be tallied at the end of July, and I'll start streaming in August. And hey! If you're seeing this video after the official vote has closed, feel free to comment anyway. I'll need a second game to play eventually. I thank you greatly for your assistance, and I hope you look forward to the streams or the archived playthrough of the winning game.